this is the pattern that you are releasing from this, that uh, can, connection with money or lack can be connected to a vow that maybe she took when she was a priest in 1500s that, that stated that she wasn't allowed to have money, right? So she took that vow with her through all these lifetimes, but now it's causing a problem because now she actually wants to make money, right? So there might be some guilt connected with that. Malorine, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. I'm really excited to speak with you. You have so much knowledge and you do quite a few different things. Um, you're a spiritual counselor and mystic, and you're also into intuitive astrology, tarot, numerology, the Akashic Records, just so many different spiritual tools that you're well-versed in. So I want to start off by asking you a little bit more about your journey. What was your journey into spirituality and what led you into spiritual counseling and calling yourself a mystic? Yeah, well, th well thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for having me here. And it's just great to, um, yeah, to talk with you. Um, so let's see. Okay, start from the beginning. <laughs> um, so there are different pathways that led to where I'm where I am right now. Um, the first being that um probably around four or five, um, I I knew I was like medium. I didn't know what to call it. Um, but we lived in an old kind of a colonial house in Flatbush. And um, yeah, I used to like hear people at night. I would have trouble sleeping and I live with my family, my mom, my grandparents and my great grandmother. So it's a very large household. And, um, everybody just thought I was playing around and she doesn't want to sleep and blah, blah. blah. And then my great grandmother who at the time I didn't realize, but she's, she's a spiritualist. Um, and she was part of a Baptist church in Trinidad, but they also worshiped, um, the Orisha Shango. Um, so she was already in that world and I didn't, I didn't know, but she was just like, oh, okay. She's like, I'll just, I'll talk to her and I'll figure, I'll figure out what's going on. And then she knew that what was happening, like I was seeing spirits and hearing them. So she would help me um, kind of like get them out of my room at night to sleep. So she would tell me to like, you know, I have to tell them off and I have to curse at them. And I was like, I can't curse at them. And I was just, I can't say that word. And she's like, you got to say it. And I was like, you know, get the F out of here. Oh, you know, it's just like, you got to say it, say it with an intention. Um, because it's like, I mean, I, I wouldn't condone doing that right now, but it was just more about like standing up for yourself and really kind of making it clear. They can't just visit you at any time of the day and night. So that did help. But then from then on, um, yeah, I, I was always in, interested in spirituality and religion. So I would go with her to, um, all of the services on Sundays, like Catholic church, we went to a Catholic church and she also went to a Baptist church. I went to both with her. Um, I was, I pretty much knew the Bible. I know the Bible, well, maybe not right now, but at the time I knew it inside and out. Like I would read the Bible on my own. I would go with her. And if she didn't want to go, I would go on my own, take the bus there. And like eight years old, I mean, it was a different time in New York. Um, I could take the bus, you know, kids were a lot more, um, I guess, um, I will say mature, but they had us out there doing all sorts of stuff. Um, so I would just, yeah, go, go to the church myself. Um, and then I started reading up more on what, um, what I was kind of reading in the Bible, but then also seeing outside, like experiencing with her and her friends and what they would talk about. I'm like, oh, what is mediumship? Um, what is tarot? Like, what does that mean? And, um, she would also go to botanicas. I don't know if you know what they are, but like, um, I think of botanicas as mm -hmm. gardens with flowers. Is that wrong or oh, is that so simplified? No, no. A botanica is a, is a shop. So it's an, oh, it's a, okay. it's That's like super a, wrong. No, no, it's okay. It's all right. I mean, yeah. And it's in the, hence in the name, you would think it's like a botanical thing, but um, yeah, I totally understand that. It's um, so it's kind of like, you know, we have apothecaries nowadays, like it's very like pristine new age, pretty crystal shops, botanicas, especially in New York or like kind of urban, like city areas. They were places where um, Latin Caribbean, African um, people of the people of descent would go and get their spiritual tools and um like crafts get readings and it was kind of like you know sometimes a hole in the wall shop that would just there's still a few in in brooklyn um that you can just kind of go to and get your old school candles um 
you know, get a reading in the back from somebody's abuela, you know, <laughs> um, you kind of get your herbs there. So it was the old school version of apothecaries and the people weren't as like love and light back then. They were kind of a little bit ornery and um, not very friendly. Um, but yeah, she used to go get her reading once a month um, at a place in, in the Bronx. So I used to go with her and yeah, even going there with the other kids, um, there were always like a bunch of kids because all the mothers and grandmothers were getting their readings on, you know, their spouses and their jobs. And, you know, I didn't know anything at the time, but I was, we would just hang out. All the kids would hang out and um I got my first tarot deck there and started learning the images on the cards and then the numbers. And then that went into numerology <laughs> and um, then into astrology and just kind of spiraled from there. So I would just like absorb information as much as I could. Thank you for sharing that. I thought you that was amazing to hear, actually, because I have so many questions. First of all, I think it's amazing that you had someone in your life that was older who could tell you about your gifts and tell you how to master them or, you know, control them in a sense, because I feel like kids are a lot more sensitive to psychic abilities because they don't have a lot of the programming um, adults typically have and shut down certain parts of their sensitivities. So I'm happy that you had someone in your life to kind of guide you. But what's interesting about that as well is that your great grandmother was also very much in the church and you were in the church. Because usually when you hear about people who were in the church and they have these gifts, they're usually told to be ashamed of them or they're interacting with the devil. So could you just talk a little bit more about what personal philosophies did your great grandmother have in terms of religion and also the spiritual side of things like going into like mediumship? I don't know what her psychic abilities were, but how was she able to encourage you going to the church and also exploring tarot, numerology, and mediumship? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so uh, we're going to do a little bit of history lesson here. going to go all the way back. Um, so definitely in the Caribbean, for sure, um, just dealing with the transatlantic slave trade. Um, you know, Ifa, which is uh, part of the Yoruba um, religion, Yoruba peoples, came over from West Africa, and it kind of like dissipated and broke up into many different forms of religion. So you have Santeria, Lukumi, Voodoo, and they all kind of like, um, you know, they took pieces of those traditions. So a lot of times with those traditions, what happened because they weren't able, slaves weren't able to practice their traditions outright, they would have to do it under the cover of Catholicism. So a lot of times they would um, merge the energy of saints and the Orishas and like kind of worship them simultaneously or working, having an altar for Jesus, but then having also having an altar for Yemaya or your Oshun or something like that. So it would kind of like there'll be a merging of that. So a lot of the um we call them ATRs, which are African traditional religions, are are kind of steep in that mix mixture of this very unique mixture of um Christianity, Christianity, Catholicism, and um African traditional religions. They're kind of like merged in 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 within each other. So that's kind of like where it started and kind of, like you said, this kind of interesting hidden aspect behind it because yes, I mean, definitely when I was in church, I went to a very traditional Catholic church. Um, we never really had a chance to speak about it because our, our services were very, um, yeah, very traditional. We came in, we had, the, we had our seats, we had our pews, didn't really talk to a lot. I mean, we knew that our people were there, but it wasn't as like a, um, you know, it's like have the service, you talk a little bit and you go. So it wasn't very interactive. Um, the Baptist church, which is a little bit more, I feel like looser <laughs> in their, in their um, rules. Um, these were churches that normally would go on for like three or four hours. This is like the old, like the old fashioned kind of like black churches, um, but Caribbean style. <laughs> so they were, they would go on for about three or four hours. It was a long, long service. Um, but they would, a lot of times they would merge these, um, like this, this, the synchronicity of like these, um, these rituals and traditions that they would merge in, but it was seen as um, we're still worshiping God because um, in, in essence, um, all of the, all of those religions are connected to a source. Um, so they were able to kind of like merge them together. So I feel like for my great grandmother, um, who's also a medium, also a psychic, which are two very, yeah, the whole thing is they're all different. Um, 
you know, every medium is a psychic, but not every psychic is a medium, right? <laughs> so it was very um, a different energy, but she was able to to hold many hats, so to speak. Um, and even for myself, I, I think sometimes I talk about it and uh, people will assume, probably looking at me and probably thinking my, my practice, that um yeah what I do is like evil do not do not be demonic and I've never thought of it that way because I know who I work with and I know that I work with light beings and ascended beings that don't are not as critical as like say humans can be of each other so um I just knew from quite a young age that that was what I saw and that really helped color how I view my own um my own spiritual craft. So um, I hope I answered that. I was like a little bit. You did. <laughs> you, did. <laughs> you did. You did a great job. You've been answering these questions so well. So I do like that you're giving an explanation. I like mm -hmm. the history lessons. I like the stories. I think they add more meat to the answers. So I really appre appreciate that in a guest. So just want to give you your props oh. there. Oh, I'm okay. really happy that you mentioned the whole evil thing, right? Because I mm -hmm. think a lot of people would consider what you do in tapping into the other side, right? Being a medium, which is connecting with the other side. And I know psychics psychics deal more with potentially predicting the future because the future is obviously a moving target, but mm -hmm. all because someone's a psychic doesn't mean that they can connect with someone on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, if I just want to make sure that I understand that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm happy that you brought up the evil part of it because I think there's a lot of discourse right now going on that I've been noticing a lot more mm -hmm. where you have people who were considered new age. And I put that in quotes because that could mean so many different things, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess people who are into astrology talk about Akashic Records, numerology. I've been seeing a lot of people like go on platforms and saying like they've dropped everything and they've given their life to Christ and they've gone back to the church and they didn't realize it, but they were dealing with spirits and, you know, evil entities. So it's interesting to hear you talk and say that, well, I'm actually dealing with light beings. So I'm curious to know, have you been hearing this discourse and what do you say to people? Or I guess, what are your thoughts on that shift happening? Mm -hmm. And what are your not just your thoughts, but why do you think that's that people are who go from practicing astrology and tapping into their psychic abilities are now running back to the church and repenting? Mm, that's a good question. Um, there's a few reasons I feel. Um, I feel probably a lot of them are scared. I mean, if you're going, and I feel like that's the thing. I mean, being a psychic or an intuitive or an empath, we all have that ability. And I I believe wholeheartedly <laughs> that, especially in terms of African religions and connecting, it's pretty much connecting to yourself. When we're connecting to spirits and things, and entities outside of ourselves, in essence, they are parts of us as well. And they're just helping us to learn more about who we are. And that's how I frame it when I'm working with clients. I'm not, you know, I'm not to be saying this, but I feel like a lot of, I always, um, I'm lucky. I tend to attract clients who um, get me and get where I'm coming from. And then I'm not like, you know, some people like treat it like a sideshow uh, kind of thing. And it's like, oh, you know, read my future and do this. I'm not doing that. Like we're, we're not, like, um, I'm here serious about this. And that's where the counseling comes in. I, what I help people do is to see, if I'm looking at a past life, I'm not looking for it just to see that you were part of a, a coven or you were a medieval princess or whatever. That's not the point for me. For me, it's like, I want to see what your patterns are that are limiting you in this life and why do you keep repeating them? So when I ask the records or I ask your guides or my guys, that's what I'm, that's my intention, right? So when they show me a past life or they show me something that I need to see, it's for a reason. And that's what I love working with, with this energy because it it's very much like the lack of judgment that exists in the astral realm is astounding. Like even like every time I'm there, I just wish I can like stay there. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, earth is so hard. Um, but yeah, I feel like a lot, I feel like I would not be surprised if some people maybe tap into it and tap into themselves um, and they get scared. A lot of what I feel has been demonized and particularly for African-based religions, there's been a demonization of, of what we practice. Like voodoo is seen as this evil, like we're, you know, um, uh, bringing back 
uh, zombies to life. And that was brought on through Hollywood. Um, but, but going all the way back, it does stem from anti-Blackness. You know, you don't see this dealing with Asian religion, um, you know, Buddhist Buddhism or, um, you know, <laughs> the I Ching or anything like that. It's not seen as evil, but they do have, they, they work with demons as well right they work with light and darkness they because you have to hold both you can't see one without the other so there is always this balance of being and yang of black and white of you know there's not really good and bad but there's always this dichotomy so i always found it very interesting and i'm also i don't know if i told you but i'm also an anthropologist so that's like where my this is where i'm getting a lot of my history from but um it, it it irks me to no degree that it seems like the religions that or connections to spirituality that are considered evil are ones that are um, steeped in in blackness or are most likely people of color, Latin people, people who are obviously not within the white pa patriarchy. So I just feel like this idea of of evil. I feel like if people will would look past what you know what their have been, and we've all been influenced, right? You know, even me who have been growing up in this very, this world, I still sometimes, I wouldn't say I doubt, but I question things because I'm hearing people say outwards, oh, this is what's happening. And I'm like, no, I, I feel like I know what's going on, even though it might make me a little bit like a little, a little wavered, but I always come back to my foundation. But I can only imagine someone who doesn't have that foundation. They can easily be, be, I would say set astray. I don't think, you know, being part of religion is a, say a bad thing. I feel like that's probably their journey. <laughs> but I do feel like there is a a global, I would say, sense of um certain aspects of spirituality being seen as evil. And I would say that they are rooted in anti-blackness. Yeah, I also, as you were talking, I was also thinking about, you know, potentially that. You know, I think that when it comes to spiritual practices, and I think before we even got into recording, we were talking mm -hmm. about the idea of curiosity, knowing mm -hmm. that there's something else out there. And even your story is very impactful because you were hearing spirits and you were tapping into your medium gifts at such a young age. It's not something you had to turn on or learn. It just came to you, right? Mm -hmm. So I also think that a lot of people get really curious about the other side and potentially could be doing practices or opening themselves up to different types of entities. Because like mm -hmm. you said, there are good entities out there mm -hmm. and there are bad entities out there. I do think that there is a demonization of practices that people cannot comprehend because mm -hmm. they deem it as you're straying away from God, right? And to me, part of the reason why I like to have these conversations is because everyone is so much on the extreme end of like these conversations sometimes. And I try to kind of bring balance. And that's why I asked you about your, your childhood background being in the church, but also having the freedom to kind of explore your gifts and hone in on them and hone in on your craft, which I think is amazing. Right. So I, so again, I, mm -hmm. I appreciate you for um, explaining that and in your, your thoughts on that. Um, it also makes me want to ask you in terms of the work that you do, do you actually interact to come across negative entities and how do you protect yourself from that? Or do you not have a problem interacting with them? Cause again, I, to, to the point I was making and to part of why I asked the question is mm -hmm. I do think that people are curious about these practices, but mm -hmm. they might not have the understanding to really realize what they're grappling with. Right. Like your grandmother was able to tell you, Hey, if these spirits are bothering you, this is what you do. Some mm -hmm. people don't have that and mm -hmm. they freak out and say, oh, this, these are demons, but they're not actually demons. Yeah. So I'll stop there and let you answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is great. I love this. Um, Yeah, for sure. I definitely, that's why I feel like, I, I feel like that's what I'm saying. Like, that's their journey because I feel like it's not up to me to like tell them that they're wrong if they want to go back to the church either because i mean when i was very much i was one of those yeah kids who would go willingly go to sunday school you know i i love learning about the bible and hearing i always saw the you know these beautiful stories and i was able to like visualize and put myself in the stories and see it and that's probably part even um 
of the psychic ability, being able to connect to what I'm hearing and making this whole beautiful story. Um, so yeah, I do feel like, yeah, I mean, that's definitely an issue. People rushing in, um, going way too hard, way too fast. Um, I mean, my practice has been developed on, um, you know, age myself but yeah i mean over 35 years right so i could definitely um i, I mean I, and i always tell clients too to not from you know don't say it's not a partition but if i'm sensing something definitely don't put it as like you have to see what i'm seeing because i've been working on this for so long that's going to be very different from what someone else is experiencing and i mean it could be a mixture of things um definitely people being excited and curious and just going all the way and then not really um following up you know um because i mean that's the whole thing you think about a practice right it's a practice it's a craft so it takes time to hone those things and i do feel i think i was talking to a friend of mine um you know looking at like witch talk or spiritual talk on um, tiktok you know and um a lot of like you know say baby witches or people who are new to spirituality it's like um, yeah, it does require a certain level of patience and, and again, curiosity, but to actually follow up and follow through with what you're, what you're doing and asking questions to like, yeah, if you don't know what's happening, like probably go out and, you know, find mentors. There are a lot of people out there, especially now who, um, you know, find somebody that you vibe with and just, um, but I feel like that that is something that I'm hoping um, we see a, a larger trend of because I feel like over the pandemic, there was a lot of doing, a lot of people doing self teaching, which is great, but um, not a lot of follow up after that, not a lot of ability to integrate what they just learned. And then plus, we're going through a pandemic. So that's also a trauma, a lot of PTSD happening there. So I feel like it's just like a formula for a lot to happen there that. It's just, it's like probably multi-layered for a lot of people um, where they probably like went all in and there was just like, oh, this is scary. I don't know. I'm hearing stuff now. I don't like this. Let me go back and pray. And it's like, yeah, that's great. You know, be honest. I'm like, I'm all for it because I wouldn't call myself a Christian or a Catholic now, but I definitely am a spiritualist. Like I, if I, you said, if I have encountered any, um, like say evil spirits or say, I know, be honest, um, I don't know if I would call them evil. I'm going to be honest. Um, what I have seen are a lot of lost spirits and a lot of, especially when there are beings who used to be human who've been here for some time, they they tend to sometimes forget. They can forget, um, I would say, social graces, I would say. <laughs> and they kind of, um, yeah, I think they just kind of, um, they, they lose the plot a little bit. So what I have seen, um, people, you know, energies that can come across as very intimidating um, or aggressive, but when it get down to the heart of it, it's like, oh, they want to be heard or they want you to understand what they feel or yeah, they're, this is, they feel this is their house. And if we have a conversation, um, yeah, we can live here amicably. Why not? Right. You know, I'm, I, I, the house I live in is um, I'm taking care of the family house right now. So I'm in the house that I originally had those um, scary dreams from. And it's so interesting because now I'm coming back more mature as an adult. And um, yeah, a lot of the same energy is still there, but I'm more experienced now. And pretty much I was like, yeah, we're not doing this midnight 3 a.m. waking me up thing so if you got something to say you gotta say during the day when I'm awake and I'm conscious and I'm giving you time limits as office hours you know or you know we're gonna work together I won't put sage in this room but you can't just be popping out and just doing whatever you want at, at either so we have a we have an agreement but I feel like I'm not saying like there are never any kind of like evil energies but I just from my experience, if I'm doing any kind of mediumship, it tends to be reasons why they might come across. Like some of the humans, right? Or I'm not saying like there are no evil human beings, but if you have someone who's like in a bad mood, um, like a neighbor or something, you're like, oh, they're this bad person. And they're just like, Ugh. but then you're like, I don't know, it might go deeper. And again, no excuse, but maybe you might find out that they had a challenging childhood or their spouse just left them or they let, they lost their, you know? So it's like, Oh, okay. Again, no excuse that they're acting like that, but I see now why they're not as friendly in the morning when I see them outside. Okay. I get that. You know, um, it's just for context really is not to say like, they're not a challenging person. It's just that, Oh, okay. I understand. Like I get it. So I use the same, um, the same formula when I'm working with spirits. 
I try to give them benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah, that that's a good way of looking at it. I mean, it kind of goes back to the age old saying of hurt people, hurt people. So mm -hmm. I guess hurt spirits potentially <laughs> mm -hmm. could hurt people or come off pretty negative. Um, and I think this is a perfect segue to talk about soul retrieval, because that's mm -hmm. something that you do as well. I've heard about this term so many times, to be quite honest, I'm not sure what it is. Mm -hmm. So could you explain what soul retrieval is? Sure. Um, well, this is the way that I do it. I, I want to make, make that clear. And everybody has their own, own style. So what I use are a series of um, different energy healing modalities. So I use Reiki, um, which is like energy healing. You can do it through touch, but you also can do it um, through distance. Um, and I use that just, it's a very light, it, fl it helps the chi, the energy to flow easier. So I always keep that in the space whenever I'm using it. Um, I also use the Akashic records. So I have, I open it, open it up with a prayer and I just set the intention to work with higher ascended beings. So, um, archangels, angels, ancestors, and I, I, with the Akashic records open, I set that intention. So I have those two things already set. Then for the soul retrieval, I also do a, a third, um, technique, which is called SRT, which is spiritual response therapy. It goes really, it goes a little deep, but pretty much what I'm using is a pendulum to clear and douse um, certain aspects of a person's like body or chemistry. And I'm what I'm reading are charts. So I have charts that I make or charts that were um, like I find and I put them all together and these charts will have like numbers on them or they will refer back to um, a certain theme, um, like so to speak, like maybe a past life. So I have a series of options. So I use my pendulum to tell me if it's this or that. And I use that as also a dousing tool. So just a clearing tool. Um, so I know it's a lot right now that I'm saying, but I, I use those three things and um, in the session. And then when I do oh, have a session with someone, they are, um, I would say under, um, I'll have a chat with them like this at first. And then I, I set the kind of a music. So some sort of a Hertz frequency that is um, connected to their theme. So say if it's like um, something heart related or love related, most likely something 400 or 500 will show up. If it's like general clearing, like, you know, negative energy or toxins within it, maybe a 741 will show up, something like that. So I first set the tone with the with the frequency music. I have that playing in the background. And then I set the intention for them to just receive what I'm doing. Um, they can have their own experience, you know, just to kind of receive that energy for an hour, hour and a half. Um, I don't give it, I don't give any other prompts other than that. I want them to experience what they're experiencing. Normally I have them like lay down or on their bed or the couch. I take out the cameras. I do the work um, kind of in the background here while they're, while they're laying down. And a lot of the times we come and we'll come back about an hour and a half later. <laughs> um, the client most likely will experience something. It might not be the same. For some people, it might be a visual thing because they're maybe they're, they're clairvoyant. So they will say, oh, I saw colors and I saw this and I saw this person and I saw an elephant or whatever. Um, well, other people might hear something. They're like, you know, I, I felt like the music was muted or it got really quiet or it got really loud or something like that. Um, like So we talk about that first. Then I, I keep track of what I saw or what I picked up. And it will be very specific, like I said before, of their pattern. So say we talked about the beginning, that person has an issue with lack or they have a hard time keeping a job. So that's what I would go in there. Like, hey, can you, we ask our guides, we ask my guides, can we please go in and see what is the pattern that is pre preventing Rebecca from keeping a job? And they say, okay, it's almost like you go to the librarian, you kind of go up to the desk, you get them the card and they go back and they get the reference material that you need. So they come back with like a stack of books and say the books are, you know, past life number one, past life number two, and a present life connection with her mother, number three. So we go through all those three things. We analyze it. If I might get some more details, like what specific year the past life happened. Um, a lot of times you could be a different gender, different race, a different location. It could be, it's very interesting. It could be anywhere. Um, then we talk about it. We say, okay, this is what came up. This is the pattern that you are releasing from this, that, that connection with money or lack. 
can be connected to a vow that maybe she took when she was a priest in 1500s that that stated that she wasn't allowed to have money right so she took that vow with her through all these lifetimes but now it's causing a problem because now she actually wants to make money right so there might be some guilt connected with that there might be some shame or might be some sort of self punishment so we have to clear that energy first before we can even deal with the energy of making money so sorry, I know I said a lot just now, but <laughs> it's it's a very detailed process. Um, I appreciate the details actually, mm -hmm. just to make sure I understand. So essentially mm -hmm. soul retrieval mm -hmm. is really working with the person and tapping into, I guess their soul blueprint, how many lives they've reincarnated and how those lives are potentially affecting them in their current life. So, yes. which I've heard is also tied to karma. So soul retrieval and karmic cycles are intertwined, if I'm understanding correctly. Um, I, I'm always a little bit um, sketchy in terms of karmic cycles because karma sometimes, just a modern definition can sometimes allude to people having to like being like paying back for something they did wrong. And I, I, I don't feel that's the case a lot of the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not trying to like play be specific, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a karmic cycle necessarily. Um, it could just be, I just say like, yeah, I, I do use those patterns. They're patterns that they're repeating. Um, and I also like to quote, I don't know if you know the um the old old poltergeist, the very first one, like from this from the 70s or 80s, no. um, with Carol Ann. So in the in the oh, the original poltergeist, um, the little girl is trapped in the TV from the that's where the realm is. So the her mother has, and the TV is just shining light all the time. So the girl's in there, but they can't get her out. She can't walk out because there are beings in there that won't let her. So her mother literally has to like tie this rope around herself and go physically go in there and get her daughter out um, safely. So that's uh, like when I explain it to clients, that's the fastest way I tell them. I'm like, what I'm doing is tying the rope around my waist, me, some of your guys, some of my guys, we go in there like Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> go into the TV and we we collect those parts of your soul that we need to help you with those patterns, you know, and then we bring that back out and then we show it to you. We show it to you. We talk about it okay. and we, we clear it as well. So it's like, okay. it's this whole, it's a, there's a sense of putting it into your consciousness. That's important. Like, um, it's it's a it's a part of it. Like the person has to be conscious of what is happening so that they can be, yeah, conscious to not to kind of be like mindful of where it could show up again. Okay. Guess, yeah. So to to even make sure I fully understand this, because <laughs> yeah. I think I do. So based on the example that you gave about working with a client mm -hmm. and then they're struggling with something and you tap into the Akashic records and you see mm -hmm. that, oh, okay, in these two past lives these were the patterns that happened. And in this current life, this is how it's playing out with this person. So essentially the soul retrieval aspect of it is essentially taking where they're stuck, where they haven't been making progress mm -hmm. and bringing it into their frame of consciousness in this present life mm -hmm. and clearing that contract. For example, like you said, if she took a vow, if you know, the person that you get used as an example, mm -hmm. if they took a vow to be a priest or to not make money, mm -hmm. they're stuck in that lifetime. They're stuck to that vow. They're stuck to that contract. So mm -hmm. soul retrieval is basically breaking that contract, releasing it from those past lives and also releasing it from playing out in this, their current life. Correct. I hope I didn't overcomplicate that. No, no, that's, that's right. Um, I'm just going to say one thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily break the contract. So I always ask, I always ask. I know a lot of people like to do that. They're like, they throw it at, you know, like, oh, I'm breaking contracts. Or I'm like, um, they do cord cutting. And I always tell people, I'm like, yeah, I mean, um, but if that cord is meant to be there, that cord is going to be there, right? We can, you know, it's like trying to cut, um, I don't know, like a boat for um, the rope for an anchor. It's like almost like metal and twine. Imagine going up there with like a pair of like, children's scissors and like I'm gonna cut this cord and they're like you're not cutting this cord if this cord doesn't want to be cut you're not gonna cut it right what we can do is um make the person aware that this cord exists 
this, this is probably something that they need to play out in their life. Um, so I never promise, I never promise that I'm cutting any contracts or anything like that. That's going to be solved automatically because that's never the case. Um, but we are bringing it to their consciousness. We help, we're helping them to make it easier. So like using that boat example, maybe that rope is like this thick and we, we dwindle it down. We make it manageable so that it's not, um, maybe that money issue is something that Rebecca has to learn throughout this life. So I'm just helping her. I'm just giving her like a leg up um, to be able for her to figure it out as she goes along. And then if she needs like feedback, that's something that you know, I can just keep like helping along the way. Um, but that's, that's kind of how I see contracts and chords. It's very much like, um, like, yeah, we, we don't have to say in, in how things are. I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be the illusion that is broken, but it's really not. If it's, if it's meant to be there, it's meant to be there for some people. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and you know what, that does make sense because I think at the end of the day, we are all in control and in charge of our own lives. And we mm -hmm. all have our own lessons that we're supposed to learn. Yeah. So cutting the cord or ending the contract might not actually be in service to that person's higher good. And they actually still have to do certain actions in this life to break those contracts themselves, mm -hmm. really. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm a little confused by is, so mm -hmm. what does clearing do then? Because I used to think clearing and and cutting contracts were the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. And that you make a great your analysis is amazing. Like you just, you summed it up perfectly. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, they're clearing, I feel is kind of like, it depends on what it is, but I see it either we're minimizing the effect of, it's almost like we can be like negotiators, like say, um, okay, look at an example. I'm very much into analogies. So say that person, say that contract is like a Verizon contract, right? And um, Verizon has you down for paying for this phone for 18 months. And you're like, I can't afford it. I don't want the phone anymore. And Verizon's like, well, you're stuck for that's for eight, even if you use it or not. So let's say I would go in, say I was, I'm a negotiator. I would say, okay, all right, Verizon. Yeah, we get it. They purchased the phone. They didn't know. So why don't we say, why don't we make it nine months? And they still keep the phone. You don't lose anything because you know you're going to get your money back. How does nine months sound? And they're like, okay, no, 12. No, no, we're going to stick to nine. Let's let's try and negotiate nine, maybe 10, right? So yeah, kind of a negotiation depending on, and I'd say Verizon being like God or spirit or their guys or their, their spirit team. So who I'm negotiating with in essence, are the same beings that are here to look after, look over them. And um, yeah, I mean, they are very much here to help us, but they are very much intent on us learning those lessons as well. So this is why sometimes they might not negotiate that the contract will be completely released, right? Um, I'm sure you've like seen probably have yeah, with people at credit cards, right? It's like, oh, okay, I can't pay the whole thing, but I'll pay a little bit. I'll pay some of it. And they're like, okay, good. That sounds, that's good enough, right? It's kind of, that could be fine. So some people it's easy. Some people it's like, okay, boom, we pay that off. That clearing is done. You don't have to, and obviously not worry about it, but but that faction might be finished and will kind of like cleared up, but it does, then we give Rebecca the autonomy. And I like to always give people their will back. I never say like, I'm like, I'm just helping you. I'm not doing, you know, you still have free will. So Rebecca now has free will. Now that the, if it has been fully cleared to then make better choices with her money, right? To then maybe, um, uh, really, maybe it was a self-esteem thing too. Maybe again, there could be other things wrapped up there. So maybe her not um, going for a job that can pay her more to live better, live well. Now she has the confidence to do that, you know, or um, that resistance that she was feeling. Maybe now she can open herself up, open herself more to um, to get that raise, to work hard. You know, I don't know. So it could it could show up in many ways. But I was like to say, I like to give the power back to the to the client so that they then are able to like, um, yeah, take the baton and kind of run with it, <laughs> like in a relay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that makes a lot of sense because I kind of see, again, if I was to put it in my own words, if mm -hmm. I was going to a practitioner like you, mm -hmm. I would essentially be looking for the cheat code. Maybe using an example that a lot of people can relate to is mm -hmm. this notion of dating the same person with different faces. And somebody might be wondering, why do I keep coming across the same type of person and reliving the same thing over 
and over again. Why am I drawn to that, et cetera? So I think going to a practitioner, a spiritual practitioner like you, I would be able to get additional insight or the person would be able to get additional insight as to why they keep making the same mistakes, how that particular, those particular interactions have played across different lifetimes and feel more empowered to change their life and you change your life by making different decisions or, you know, taking Mm -hmm. different action. And I think a lot of people intuitively know this as well. I mean, with, whether they choose to seek out a spiritual counselor or not, I think getting a cheat code makes things go faster rather than taking five years to repeat cycles. It might take one year, but I do think that we're all, it's all kind of like inbuilt within all of us intuitively. And Mm -hmm. we know, and we realize when we're repeating certain cycles, Mm -hmm. et cetera. So I hope I, I hope I, like explain that correctly. I hope that's no, no, with what you're trying an to amazing say. Job. Okay. I feel like I'm, I I give like rambly kind of explanations and then you narrow it down in a very concise, like beautiful way. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. I've never <laughs> said that. You perfect. You got it. Like, yeah. okay. No. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you expanding makes me fully understand it because then I don't have to continue to pry for additional details. So I actually think I'm able to follow you. I'm not confused yeah. because okay, I'm good. able to follow you. That's why I'm able to sum it up because I want to make sure that I fully understood everything that you were saying. I appreciate you just, you know, said being curious and like understanding that. And um, yeah, like you said, just being open-minded as well. Like, you know, I, one of those things where I tend to, t- I tell clients this and um, I was thinking like having some videos about this as well. I think people don't talk about these topics, um, but I always, I don't know what you like to, you know, burst people's bubbles. I always tell people that, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of here, like I am like, like a light worker, like I'm working, right. I'm not here to um, like, please anybody <laughs> like I am, but at the same time, like who I'm here to please is like, you know, our, everyone's high is good. The universe, you know, the connection to all. So yeah, I tell people like very, like, I'm going to be like hard hitting. We're going to go deep. If you're going to work with me, we're going to do the work. Um, and like I said, I've been very fortunate that I've attracted clients that are ready to, and I, I know it's one of those things where I'm saying never advertise. I stopped advertising because it just became, I'm not very good at sales. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I'm, I've always, um, I think I just operate like those Botanica, um, umbrellas where, um, the thing was like, you go on a Sunday and either she was there or she wasn't there. Right. You just, there were no, there was no, I mean, yes, I have scheduling. It's not, I'm not that bad, but it was like very much like, um, yeah, like she, she worked when she was ready and when she had the energy and, um, I'm yeah, very fortunate that I have people, I'm attracting clients who are ready to do the work because, um, a lot of my sessions are like, Um, consecutive you know they're like three or four sometimes I have some people for years and we work on and it's not just one thing we work on because there's always more um I've told like I um when I start doing work on myself I I think I spent the first two years just clearing myself possibly not every day but maybe every other day just doing deep clearing for myself, my own soul retrieval. And it was, it was heavy because I kind of got frustrated. I was like, wait, there's more. And then there's more. And then there's more. I was like, there's almost feels like it's never ending. Um, but that's how it feels sometimes. And um, I'm just, you know, definitely was frustrating. It still is sometimes, but I'm grateful that I feel like um it feels like almost like you're constantly cleaning up this like quarter house or something where it feels like it's um, it's never going to end and then one day you look around and you can actually sit in the living room and you're like oh it's not as bad as I thought it was you know or I have I have done some work okay great there's like 10 garbage bags out there okay I have done something um so yeah I feel like when people see that sometimes the results are really helpful like I feel like our guides know that too they know that we need to see like we need to see results to keep going and they, they do give us that. They give us like, okay, you need something, we'll give you this. Okay, but keep going, <laughs> you know, keep keep practicing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. And I think this whole situation, what we've been talking about, I think is very interesting to me because I kind of think it's like soul therapy, right? We have talk therapy, we have somatic therapy, we have different types of therapies. Mm-hmm. But I think for the people who are ready to kind of take that, 
not to be no pun intended, like dimensional shift who are trying to, you know, get to that next level and really hone in on the spiritual part of their human being. Mm -hmm. I think those are the people that I'm sure you want to attract. And those are the people who end up finding you because they're ready to go a, a step deeper, right? Because talk therapy can only go so far. Mm -hmm. Um, Somatic therapy, body-based therapy can only go so far. And all of these different modalities, they all play a significant role. Mm -hmm. um, they're all part of the puzzle. So it's not like one is way better than the other. But I think mm -hmm. that, you know, as you unlock new levels of being, you mm -hmm. need maybe more intense therapies. And I think what you described in terms of soul retrieval and tapping into Akashic Records speak to that like spiritual therapy, if I was to put it in my own words. But then it also makes me kind of want to ask you, because I'm I'm curious, what is your, why do you think we keep coming back over and over again? I know the simple question, I mean, sorry, I know the simple answer is, well, we're supposed to learn stuff and, you know, clear out cycles. Mm -hmm. But I was listening to Dolores Cannon, who she's a past life regressionist. And in a lot of her findings, she said that people might unintentionally be stuck in karmic loops mm -hmm. in the sense of like they continue to repeat cycles and they keep coming back. But when I hear that to me, it sounds really daunting, right? Because mm -hmm. how come we have freedom of choice, but when it comes to coming back or not, it seems like that's where that stops. And you might not have the answer to this, mm -hmm. but I'm just curious, like you've been doing this work for so many years now. Just what are your thoughts on constantly coming back and, and learning lessons? And is there a point where we could literally just decide to be different? Like, I just want to be a different person, period, and just completely change the whole course without having to do a soul retrieval, et cetera. That was a lot there, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love this. So yeah, I very much familiar with Dolores, Dolores Cannon. Um, it was interesting, actually. I just talked with some friends about this. When I was younger, um, I was very much like, oh, I should read these mediumship books. And I should read about um, like Nostradamus and Dolores Cannon. And my guys were always like hesitant for me to read these books. I didn't know why. And um, it's interesting. I I know parts of like stuff with Dolores Cannon and Nostradamus, but from from other people telling me. So I know bits and pieces from that. And I feel like I know I've kind of figured out, <laughs> I'm seeing why, um, because I feel like Again, not to say that anything is right or wrong. I feel like we're all given different information from, you know, I feel like member, I can't remember who her, her guides were, who she was talking to. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I would like, you know, agree. I don't know. I wouldn't say like everybody, um, probably some people are in that karmic loop, but I, I like to, but it feels very twilight zoning. I don't know. It feels like almost like a, like a nightmare. Like you said, it's just like, I, but I, I don't know. I mean, I've worked with these, you know, ascended beings and guides and they're so like very loving and caring. Some of them are very matter, matter of fact, like they don't play around. I, I don't know. I just don't feel like they would like we would be in that kind of cycle without willingly, maybe in some, maybe our subconscious is not completely aware fully. And that can be, maybe they're not completely aware all the, all the way that they're in the cycle, but I know I've, I've seen, um, this is going to be a little bit stretched, but we, we, we're sometimes we're not always human as well. So we spend time on different planets. We spend time on as angel beings. We spend time as um, beings of light with no form, you know, um, we spend time in different dimensions, right. In parallel lifetimes, it's, it kind of, it can go so far. And what I've seen just from my experience with like when I encounter these lifetimes or these like other entities, it's by they they decide to do it. So it's like, oh, I want it to be like I need a rest, or I need a break, or I want to learn something else in this dimension for some time. So there are some times when we have gaps, like gaps in our resume. Um, when I, I used to ask, I was like, what are these gaps? Like where why can't I find anything for this person between this and this time? Like, oh, because they weren't on earth they were somewhere else. And I was like, oh, okay. So they were learning some. So that's where we get the whole idea of, you know, star seeds and being from other, and people can be multiple star seeds, you know, they can come from many different dimensions and, and galaxies. Um, 
but earth is one of the most it's like the fastest way to learn because we have a limited amount of life here um it's the fastest way to learn it's coming at you hard earth is connecting with other different humans of similar like i'll say similar but yeah very different ways of uh different lessons and earth is the only really place that has all of these mixed in in one you know so it's yeah it tends to be the place where people want to go to um but there are people who take you know beings take breaks for sure um it's it's actually really um beautiful to see that sometimes because it it kind of takes away from this hustle mentality this like go 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 we have to like you know do the lessons do the work do the things and i definitely i know i was talking about having it be a practice and you know putting the work in but i also i are conscious of you know the fact that we do have you know many times to explore these um topics um which feels surreal sometimes but i feel like um yeah so i'm like am i leaving this for next lifetime i don't know no i'll try i think i'll do it now you know <laughs> i'll well do it now while i'm here right um, so i don't know if that helped a little no bit. that that helps I, I think for me too i think the notion of constantly coming back and mm -hmm. oh my god i didn't learn this lesson i have to come back i didn't mm -hmm. learn that lesson because at the end of the day we the human experience is very much focused on duality and i think mm -hmm. that i mean this is just my opinion thus far mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. think that no matter how much you reach a certain level of spiritual enlightenment we're just still going to experience certain things that bring up anger. We're going to experience grief and, and loss, maybe to varying degrees in a way that we won't be stuck in those feelings per se. But I do think while we're in a human body, there's so many opportunities to be imperfect and make mistakes that, of course, it seems easy for us to be stuck in this loop of constantly coming back. So hearing that potentially we do have freedom of choice to not have to come back. I wish we did not forget the contracts that we made. I wish we didn't forget the lives that we had, but you know, that goes into time and people say that, a lot of people say that our lives are happening all at the same time and mm. time is really not like a construct the way we think that it is. So that's a whole other rabbit hole that if we start trying to go down, we probably won't stop stop talking for the next five hours. <laughs> uh, yes. But it's 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 good to uh it's good to know that and that feels that makes me feel more calm. Again, I don't know how to necessarily prove that, but it also makes sense that we would come back and learn mm -hmm. different cycles. And it's interesting that you even said that people you know, incarnate in different races, which would also make sense. And I, I wonder if people knew that you could come back as anyone, mm -hmm. what would that do for relationships and how we see other people who are different from us, you know? So yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Another question I want to ask you, I know that we're like at the top of the hour, I, I can mm -hmm. just keep going and going and going, but I will mm -hmm. hold myself back. Uh, mm -hmm. The last question I want to ask you, because I'm curious, you talk a lot about, you know, connecting with spirit, mm -hmm. you know, spirit guides, angels, ascended masters. And you also talked about, you know, being in the church, which they talk heavily about God. So what is your perception of God mm -hmm. and the idea of talking to spirit guides, et cetera. Because, you know, to your point again, with uh, a lot of African spiritual practices, they believed in multiple gods, right? Mm -hmm. But now in present day, it's very much monotheistic. I think that's the word mm -hmm. where you believe in just one God. So I just want to hear your thoughts on the idea of like multiple gods or praying to entities outside of the one true God that people um prefer to talk about mm -hmm. yes yeah, good question um okay so I'm not sure if I have an answer for me in terms of like how I see it um because to be honest I mean when I see like uh deities or um you know other beings I feel like they are manifestations of God and um, God consciousness, Christ consciousness, I would say. And they just show up as different in different forms, in different ways. Um, and they're kind of what the, how they show up is related to how 
they can we connect within the human psyche. So um, they represent our flaws. They represent our virtues and our vices and the things we're afraid of and the things that we love. Um, so that has kind of I'm so like working out like how it shows up for me. I I think because I grew up in the church very much and um, I have my own relationship with God. Um, yeah, I do feel like when I the more, the deeper I go into that connection and align myself to be open and just seeing whatever comes in. I mean, to be honest, what I'm seeing with God is actually it's in everything that's on the earth. So it's um, connecting to plants, connecting to nature, connecting to the seasons. Um, humans are on this planet. So just whatever, what what's here on this planet is also a manifestation of, of God's energy and God's light and, um, yeah, I feel like they're all just like forms or like another other appreciations of, um, I don't know, like some like I'll say symbols or um, remnants of <laughs> I don't know what, was, what the right word is, um, but I I don't know I feel like um, I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly, but yeah, I feel like you know definitely have this idea I think just from my own Christian upbringing that there is this God and then everything else is kind of underneath that so I'm still working through how that what that looks like for me but like I said just going back I do feel like the entities and connections that I see are are the manifestations or connections to that Christ consciousness that God spirit um I don't know if I'm, I answered you it. You answered well. you answered it perfectly. I mean, it's such a large question to answer. It's more mm -hmm. at this point, it would just kind of be more your opinion based on your experiences. There's mm -hmm. really no right or wrong answer, but I just wanted to ask you since you, you know, are into all of these different practices and you have so much knowledge. Um, just wanted to hear your thoughts mm -hmm. of, on where you have arrived at that question. So yeah. Thank you for sharing. This was a great conversation and I'm trying to hold myself back from asking 20 more questions. <laughs> uh, thank you for yeah. making time. I know that your schedule has been pretty busy and you just got back from a trip, but you still made time for the podcast. So I really appreciate you for that. I have yeah. to ask you one yeah. final question, sure. which I always ask all my guests, which is, mm -hmm. have you shifted in perspective on anything lately? And it could be as lighthearted as you want it to be. Like maybe you started eating a new um, ice cream or dish that you never thought you would like, or it could be as deep as you want it to be. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Recently. Okay. So, uh, I went to visit some, a few friends and, um, we're all kind of like different, um, spiritual inclinations and we have like, you know, conversations like how we're having and, um, we talk about our ideas and theories and, um, Every time I'm up there, I, I like to connect to birds of prey. Um, I like a lot of birds are on my spirit team. I feed the birds outside my window here and I have a whole collection of different types of birds and I love working with birds. Um, every time I go up there, I always tend to either like constantly see hawks or vultures or even like eagles. Um, and like my, my friend's house, like when I'm there looking, the hawk would be circling around. And as soon as like, I'm like, oh, look at that. And she comes and it's like, it disappears. And I'm like, I, I just literally saw it. I knew it was there. It's kind of like playing around. Um, so what I, what I probably realized was that, um, yeah, like, I mean, I knew we all had like different spirit guides and things like that. But um, like just knowing, like I always set the intention, like whoever shows up for me, like whatever messages I have on this trip, please let me know and just make it very clear. And um, yeah, the hawk was just reminding me to um, that bigger picture thinking. This is a theme for me in this life to pull out and we move, go away from the details and kind of see the see the whole thing. And even as we're talking, that was just another you know another reminder to just yeah con continuously always pull out always pull out from the um zoom out <laughs> and see okay what am I actually looking at um just for perspective's sake um and that's really again it's just a reminder of that and having this conversation with you and just again just reminding me of that too just um yeah we're talking about the people who like leave you know um you know witchcraft or tarot or whatever astrology and go back to the church I'm like yeah okay good great you know, maybe that's what they need. Maybe for them, maybe, maybe this is their religious life. I don't know. I've, I've had mine. Right. So maybe it's, maybe it's their turn, you know, and, and sometimes like that, I mean, it's helped 
me to not take things personally, especially with the work that I do. Um, you know, I don't like to clear it, you know, completely out to people I don't know. I mean, people probably look me up and see it anyway, but um, I'm getting more comfortable with it as I get older. I mean, maybe it's just age. You get to a certain age and you're just like, well, this is who I am. You got to take it or leave it. You know, this is, this is what it is. Um, and yeah, and also having that compassion for people who don't see it that way too. And the more, the older I get, I guess, the more I deeper I get into this practice, the more compassion and um, not sympathy. And I feel sorry for them. It's not that, but I just feel like, okay, that's, that's what they're doing. Okay, cool. Right. But then I would hope, you know, I would hope, but I feel like I'm also setting, you know, maybe energetic boundaries to also get that respect back from others. You know, I think that's, that's the thing I, I don't see a lot of, uh, you know, people declaring that they're going and they're dropping this and then demonizing the things that they just like, it's, it's not up you know, to them to do that, but that's, that's something either here nor there. I can't control what they do, but yeah, pretty much perspective. Thank you so much for sharing that. I resonate with that so much because I think you just kind of almost describe what I'm trying to do with the podcast mm -hmm. and have these different conversations with different people, with different thoughts and opinions, because I feel like it's important for everybody to zero out of their own perspective and mm -hmm. even look at perspectives they've never even considered and just kind of say like, oh, what's at play? Like everybody's kind of saying this thing. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, to your point about villainizing one thing over the other, what I'm learning is that everything boils down to intention. Mm -hmm. People can use anything for good. People can use anything for evil, right? So yeah. I think ultimately that's what it boils down to. But thank you so much. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you or even work with you? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm still working on my like main site, but um, I do have a, um, it's uh, themoonladyschool.com. And so it's kind of like a, there's like a, um, and access to my a connection to my YouTube channel where I do free readings there um, while I kind of sort out how I want the school to look. Um, but I do, I do uh, personal one-to-one -one readings uh, one week a month. Um, and I just kind of like see people in that one go. And then I'm creating courses for like psychic development, mediumship. Um, I've been teaching astrology and Akashic records. So kind of making larger classes around that. Um, so I'm hoping for the spring, um, which is around right around the corner, the equinox, <laughs> um, which is kind of like to me, the beginning of the year. Um, but yeah, that's, that's when I'm just from the moonladyschool.com. And that's also on, um, I think I changed, yeah, changed it on Instagram. I changed it on, I'm on TikTok. I'm a lot more active on TikTok um, than I am on Instagram. I've kind of fallen out of love with Instagram a little bit. Um, we're, we're on a break. We're on a, we're on a break. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, YouTube is probably the best place to find me too. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to link all of that in the show notes and I falling out of love with Instagram as well. A lot of people have, so you're not alone, yeah. but thank you so much, Valerie, <laughs> for stopping by the show. Um, it was great yeah. having you and hopefully we can talk again in the future. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. <laughs>